Welcome, Russell T. Davis. You have been described as a genius, and you're someone whose work we've all enjoyed and admired on TV for years, although it isn't often that we get to see your face, so this is a rare privilege. Now, you not only wrote Doctor Who, you reinvented it to huge acclaim, and you have an awe-inspiring list of writing and producing credits. A Queer as Folk, A Very English Scandal, Bob and Rose, Casanova, over Torchwood, an enormous list. And of course, that includes years and years, your dystopian vision of the future, which I was lucky enough to appear in in 2018. Have you been using uh, the lockdown as an opportunity to do more writing? Uh, well, funnily enough, I'm just in between projects. I'm just finishing off a new drama called Boys, which you can edit things now sitting at home. Thank you for that introduction, by the way. <laughs> Off. I mean, good lord, and what a delight it was! We had a great time, and um, so I was sort of finishing off a project. And actually, I was due to have some time off, so weirdly, this is my time off when the rest of the world is having time off. The whole it's like the whole population of the world is going to join me, so I feel slightly upstaged. <laughs> this was meant to be my quiet time, and it's mad. Well, I, ga I gather, um, uh, Russell, that you've actually did the wonderful triumvirate of art behind you as well. So you're an artist. Are you? Do you find that um, you, you you find a lot of relaxation in painting? I do actually. Can you believe I did those with felt pen? Felt pen. Um, I'm a wizard with a felt pen. Yes. <laughs> um, actually, part of my plan for this year was to draw more and to and, and to and to yes, to sit at the drawing board and do more stuff. So. Um, I'm slightly kind of landlocked. I'm in Swansea and all my stuff is in Manchester. So um, um, my plans are just slightly delayed, but I do love drawing. It's, 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 it's my, something my hand naturally does. So yeah, I want to get back to that big time. Oh, now listen, this series is, um, or this feature is Pearls of Wisdom. And I'm fascinated to know, do you have a particular you know, piece of advice that you've read or was given to you by somebody that's really helped you uh, on, on your journey, on your, you know, in your path? I was, and I was very simply told it by my friend Sally many years ago, around about in the mid 90s. She just, and it's a very specific bit of advice. It's about writing. She just said, why don't you write more like you? And what she meant was that, that I was just starting to write drama and uh, getting my first things on ATV and they weren't very good and they were kind of dying in death. And I, I was young and I thought drama, I thought drama was very heavy and very dark and, and, and it was all full of murders and blackmails and terrible things <laughs> happening, suicides. And, and, and my friend Sally, you know, I said to my friend Sally, did you watch that? She was like, yes, it was all right. And, oh, you're not enjoying it much. Then she, went, and she said, well, you know, why don't you write more like you? Because she said, you're a laugh and you're kind of lively and you're fun. And then she, you know, she said, I don't mean you have to write lightweight stuff. It doesn't have to be funny, but there's kind of something, there's an energy to it missing. There's a sense of humour to it missing. And I, I actually spent about two years, Julie, going, no, 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 what a terrible advice. You're completely wrong. Drama is such a serious thing. It took two years to, to kind of percolate through what? my head to go, oh, right, yes, actually, um, yes, the, the thing I can trust most in the world is my own voice. So it, it's a piece of advice that says basically, be yourself. But I think it's very hard for writers, and for artists, or, or poets, or composers, you're copying other people, you're writing or you're composing, assuming what other people like. And it takes a while, for some people, it takes a long while for you to have the confidence to say, I'm going to do this like me. Yes. It's like the BBC gave me Doctor Who. You could do a million different versions of Doctor Who. And I had to sit down and remembering Sally's advice, why don't you write like you? I had to write the version of Doctor Who that was like me, that was the one I wanted to see and no one else. So I, I bless my friend Sally. She probably doesn't even remember saying it. Sally Watson of Bristol. And she's a wonderful woman and really, really brilliant. And somewhere a friend just says one little thing to you. In passing, we're probably just having a cup of tea and never forget. Changes your life. Changes yeah. your life. And even though it took two years to, as you say, percolate, wonderful word, and until it finally landed, I can understand that because it, it does require courage to speak in your voice and to feel that your voice is good enough and funny enough and, and it doesn't yeah. always have to be dark. It's the good enough is the hard bit because we none of us think we're good enough for anything and, and, that's, and you're not unique in thinking that. You've got to realise that everyone is going through that. 
that, that every writer who's ever lived has gone through that. It's hard to, it's hard to tweak that that, 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 that's the thing to overcome. You never, you spend all your life overcoming it. it it's not gone. You know, you, I sit there and have worries about stuff and they go, oh, I'm rubbish, like everyone does. It never vanishes, but you've just got to keep building up the confidence and having the nerve to do it. It takes a lot of nerve. I don't think it's something you can find straight away. But you can sometimes. Sometimes you get pop stars who are 18 years old, Billie Eilish, somewhere like that comes along, and you go, wow, you just know who you are. But they're like, <laughs> they're like pop strikes. They're just extraordinary one-off events. The rest of us, I think, have to work hard and be diligent and try and try and try, and then you get there. Yeah, absolutely. Russell, thank you. That is absolutely a, a, a real pearl of wisdom and I'm very grateful for you sharing it. And I know all the viewers will be because, you know, there's, there's been some, uh, a lot of people who are writing uh, are taking the opportunity to maybe just actually write the book they've always dreamt they've had in them or their autobiography or whatever. So I know what you've said will really resonate with a lot of people. And for all those people, my bit of advice, I would say, for all those people who started their novel, who started their painting, my second bit of advice is finish. <laughs> a lot of people start. Finishing is the key. Then you've got a book. Then you've got a painting. You'd never be happy with it. You've got to get used to that. It, 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 you always want to fit with it. You've got to stop eventually and say, yeah. this is it. Now let's move on. Let's show it to someone or, or, or you know, rewriting the back. You've got to finish it. Fantastic. Thank you. For a Gemini and a typical Gemini, which I am, that's very good advice. It's a real pearl because I start lots of projects. It's maintaining them and seeing them to the end. That's the difficult okay. bit. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting on a weekly basis. <laughs> Russell, oh, listen, thank you so much for joining me. I wish you well. And uh, it's been really lovely to see you. And I was so proud to be in years and years. Thank you. Oh. Take care.